All right, in this video, we are going to look at a real world application involving slope, and that's gonna be dealing with the pitch of a roof. And the pitch of a roof, it basically, if you think of this as being your roof right here, let's think rise over run. Uh, this is our roof, and for every seven inches that we come straight up off the roof, and I'm talking about vertically, um, 90 degrees to the ground, I'm not talking about seven inches going this way, but for seven inches, every seven inches that we go up, we're going to go 12 inches horizontally. So if we go straight up seven more inches, we're going to go 12 inches horizontally. And that's what's referred to as the pitch of a roof or the slope of a roof. So we got rise over run. So a 712 pitch, um, you can write this as a fraction as well. You can just say 7 over 12. All right, so notice over here we have a few examples. And notice as this top number, um, the rise, the vertical, the vertical movement, as it gets smaller, but yet our denominator here staying the same, the roof is getting less and less steep. Because down here, for example, for every four feet we go up, so if we go up four feet, we're going to go horizontally 12 feet. So we're going further left and right than we are going up and down. So like if you have less rise than you do run, you're going to have a less steep roof. Whereas here, for every 12 feet we go up, we go left 12 feet or we go horizontally 12 feet. Or it could be inches like I had over here as well. But uh, that's what you want. some things you want to think about. So a uh, smaller number over bigger number, the roof is not going to be as steep as if you had something like the same number over the same number. Or what if you had something like 15 over 12? Is that possible? I'm sure it is. Do contractors use it? Probably not. Uh, contractors do use this type of stuff all the time when they're building houses, buildings, and things like that. Because what this would mean is um, this roof would be something like, hmm, I mean, I'm just going to, based on this one, if this was a 12-12 pitch, a 15-12 pitch would probably be something like that. Super steep because we'd be going up 15 feet for every 12 feet that we move horizontally. I hope that makes sense. Now let's look at an application. <clears throat> so the pitch of a roof on a building needs to be three over eight or three right, that's our rise, eight is our run. And if the building is 34 feet wide, how long must the rafters be? So uh, real quick, just gonna draw a picture of a building. There's our roof and boom. All right, now, some other things we have about this problem. What do we know from here to here? That's 34 feet wide. And we're gonna make a few assumptions here as well. Um, we're gonna make the assumption that this is divided right in half. So therefore we're gonna have 17 feet over here, 17 feet over here. And uh, we don't know how tall the building is and we don't know how long this piece is. But we have a ratio that we're gonna use here, three over eight. So I'm gonna come over here to the side and I'm gonna draw another right triangle. And I'll just match this, notice I got like a little, this piece here will match up with this piece over here. That's gonna be where I'm gonna form my proportion. So this part matches up with this part. And we're gonna solve a proportion. So rise over run. So for every three feet we go up, we're going to go eight feet horizontally, and you can put feet in here if you want to, but I'm just gonna leave it three to eight. So let's solve the proportion here. We gotta find this first of all, but the question says how long must the rafters be? The rafters are going to be these guys right here. If you go up in your attic, you see some boards, and they're called rafters. I think they have some other names too. I'm not a contractor, so I can't tell you right off the top of my head. But you have several of these up in your attic to support the plywood uh, and the shingles that you put on the roof and all that stuff, the flashing, all that. You got these rafters that go up in your attic that support, and we're talking about how long is that gonna be? Well, ultimately what you're looking for is the hypotenuse of this right triangle over here. Well, before we find that, we gotta find this so that we can do the Pythagorean theorem. So setting up a ratio, we have three over eight, and notice how I set that up. That's just that little ratio right there, that pitch. Well, make sure since three is the vertical, eight is the horizontal, we want to make sure we do vertical over horizontal in our other little ratio. So X over 17. <clears throat> so three up, eight or three up or down, eight left or right, X up or down, 17 left or right. 
rise over ruin, rise over ruin. So let's cross multiply and divide. So three times 17, <clears throat> we get 51. That's equal to eight X. Let's divide by eight. And therefore I'll just leave it as 51 over eight is equal to X. But actually if you go ahead and divide that, it's not a bad decimal. Um, we get 6.375 feet. So that's what this X is right here. I'm gonna go ahead and erase that now. And I'm going to write 6.375 feet. All right. Now let me show you a few things. Notice if we do rise over run with these two numbers. This is just a review of proportions. But 6.375, whoops, 6.375 divided by 17. If I convert this to a fraction in simplest form, notice we do get 3 eighths. It's that same exact pitch. So that's good. But now the question says, how long must the rafters be? So really what we're looking for in this problem is the rafters are going to be this length here. Now, sure, if you're a contractor, you're looking at this, you're like, no, the rafters need to be a little bit longer. They need to be a little bit shorter. Let, let's just, uh, let's not get too technical here. We're really trying to find the hypotenuse. So I'll call this um, C. So think about Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And this, either one of these, reviewing the Pythagorean theorem, remember your A and your B are the two sides that make the right angle. So we can call this our A and this our B. Therefore, we have 6.375 squared plus 17 squared is equal to C squared. And you've probably done quite a few Pythagorean theorem problems um, at this point to get up this far in uh, pre-calc. Or this may be a geometry problem, but 6.375 squared, that's A squared plus B squared. So we get that. Now I don't want to round this yet. Notice I haven't rounded anything so far. I don't want to round anything until my final answer. That's always a good thing to do when you're completing word problems in math. So to, in order to find C, this number here is equal to C squared. So we need to take the square root of that answer. So I'm going to do that by taking the square root of my answer. And therefore, we get something around. Now that we finally got this, we can say, OK, um, C is approximately C is approximately 18.2. I'm just rounding to the nearest tenth feet. So, you know, I mean, yeah, who's to say just because you're um, doing a problem involving slope, which makes you think of algebra, who says you can't do a little bit of geometry with right triangles and the Pythagorean theorem? You know, all these types of math blend in together. Ultimately, the higher you, mu uh, the higher you move up in your math courses. But yeah, there you have it. There's an application of slope. And we are dealing with the pitch of a roof. And that's it for this video. Hope it helped.